Now you may have seen magnetic flux previously in high school. Possibly you saw the equation phi subscript b, the magnetic flux is equal to ba cos theta. Now the electric flux is equivalent except that now we're considering electric fields rather than magnetic fields. And we can calculate it using vector algebra. So to calculate the electric flux through a surface, we can calculate it with the equation phi subscript e, the electric flux is equal to the integral of e dot dA, where e and dA are both vectors. So e here stands for the electric field, and dA stands for a little increment of the surface area. So because it's a vector, it needs to have a direction as well. So for the increment of the surface area, we take the direction as perpendicular to that little bit of surface area. So we can visualize the electric flux as the number of field lines that are passing through a surface. So this is going to depend on several things. One of these things that it will depend on is the electric field strength. So for example, this has a higher electric flux than this. It's also going to depend upon surface area. If we have a larger surface area, then we have more electric field lines passing through our area. So this one is bigger than this one. And finally, it also depends upon the orientation of the surface with respect to the electric field. So in this case, it's larger than in this case. So let's have a look at a couple of examples and how we can calculate the electric flux through the surfaces in these example cases. So this first example, a square with a surface area of 12 centimeters squared is placed in an electric field with a strength of 2.0 newtons per coulomb so that the normal to the square makes an angle of 30 degrees with the electric field as shown in the diagram. What is the electric flux through the square? So in order to answer this one, we're calculating the electric flux, which is the integral of the electric field times um, dA, and this is a dot product. So we can write this as the integral of E dA cos theta to account for this dot product. So we'll want to integrate this over the area. So because the electric field is constant everywhere, we can pull the electric field out the front of the integral. And cos theta is also not changing, so it can also come out the front of the integral. So we can write this as E cos theta times the integral or over the surface area. So when we integrate over the surface area, this just gives us the total surface area. So this is literally just E A cos theta. So now we can just substitute in. So we've got E is 2. We've got the area is 12 centimeters squared. So to get that into meters squared, we'll need to times it by 10 to the minus 4. So if, if it was meters, it'd, uh, centimeters, it would be 10 to the minus 2. But then because it's centimeters squared, we times the 10 to the minus 2 and we end up with 10 to the minus 4. And then we times by cos of theta, which is 30 degrees. So we can then solve this on the calculator and we get 0 0.00208. Now in the question, the values are given to two significant figures. So we can present this to two significant figures as 2.1 times 10 to the minus 3. And our units for electric flux, well, it's electric field times area. So that will be Newton meters squared per coulomb. So the second example problem is an electric field is described by E is equal to 2 plus 3y k newtons per coulomb. Calculate the electric flux through the rectangle with vertices 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 320 and 300. 0, 0. Okay, so the best way to start this question is, as always, to draw a diagram. So let's draw our axes. Here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis, and here's our z-axis. And let's sketch on where the vertices are. So 
we've got one at the origin here, 0, 0, 0. Then we've got one at 3, 0, 0. So this is 3 here. And we've got one at 0, 2, 0. So this is 2 here. And then we've got the third one at 3, 2, 0. So this is a rectangle. And now let's sketch on the electric field. We can see that it has a Y dependence. So as Y is increasing, the electric field is getting stronger. So the electric field lines are getting closer and closer as we move along the Y axis like this. Now to calculate our electric flux, we're going to need to use our equation that the electric flux is equal to the integral of the electric field with the surface area of the shape that we're considering. Now in this case, because this is an, a rectangle in the xy plane, the area is going to have a direction in the k direction, the z direction, like this. So we'll need to come up with an expression for dA. Now the, a good way to do that is to consider splitting our rectangle up into little slices like this and consider a little slice which is a distance y from the x-axis and which has a width dy and why it's useful to do this is everything at the same distance y is going to have the same electric field strength because the electric field strength just depends upon y. So we can write dA as, well, in the x direction, this rectangle has a length 3, and then it'll be times dy, and the direction is the k direction. So we can write our vector dA this way. So now what we can do is we can substitute into this equation. So we've got E, which is 2 plus 3y, times dA, which we've said is 3 dy. Now we've got the dot product, and E is in the k direction, and dA is also in the k direction. So when we take the dot product of those two things, we just get 1. And then we need the limits on our integral. This will be in terms of dy. So we start at y equals 0, and we're going up to y equals 2, so from 0 to 2. So now we can integrate this. Let's pull the 3 out the front, and then we're integrating 2dy, which gives us 2y, plus 3y, which when we integrate, we get 3y squared on 2. And we're evaluating that at 0 and 2. So this is equal to 3 times 2 times 2, plus 3 times 2 squared, which is 4, divided by 2. And then when we put 0 in here, we get 0. So evaluating this, we get 30 newton meters squared per coulomb as the answer.